Thank you for joining us again in this season of Easter as we rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Uh, Jesus assures us of his presence and he makes such tender promises to us this day to encourage us uh, on the way that leads to everlasting life. God bless your worship today. We pray. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we come into your presence to hear your holy word. We ask that you would open our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that through the preaching of your word, you may teach us to repent of our sins, to believe in Jesus in life and death, and to grow every day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our opening hymn is Thou Art the Way. to confess our sins. We poor sinners confess to you, O God, not only that we have been conceived and born in sin, but also that throughout life we have often and in many ways offended you, our Lord and Maker, with our thoughts, words, and actions. You could, with perfect justice, reject and condemn us for all eternity. Therefore, we come before you with sorrow of heart, in dread and terror of your holy justice and of everlasting death. Our sins are a serious enemy, which we should hate in every way as long as we live. O merciful God, in this hour, you still remind us of your fatherly goodness. On account of the promises in your word, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy. We implore you, dear Father, on the basis of the work of Jesus, your only begotten Son, our brother, who was handed over to death because of our sins and was raised to life again for our justification. Forgive us all our sins through faith, which the Holy Spirit increases in our hearts to full confidence. We therefore pray you, O Lord, through your servant, to declare to us the forgiveness of all our sins. We poor sinners are willing to forgive all who have offended against us. We earnestly desire to grow in true godliness. Help us, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Upon this, your confession by the authority of God, I declare to you the gracious forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. May God, who has begun this good work in you, carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Amen. We join to sing, All Glory Be to God on High. that we would love others. Merciful Father, you have reached out to all people through your Son, Jesus, who died for all. Encourage us to live as your chosen people and give of ourselves to others. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our epistle this day is taken from 1 Peter, the second chapter, beginning at verse 2. Like newborn babies crave the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow up with the result of being saved. Certainly you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, like living stones, are being built as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood in order to bring spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who believes in him will certainly not be put to shame. Therefore, for you who believe, this is an honor. But for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone over which they stumble, and a rock over which they fall. Because they continue to disobey the word, they stumble over it. And that is the consequence appointed for them. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, at one time, you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. At one time, you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. So far, the epistle. We join to sing, Christ is made the sure foundation.
our attention to the historical lesson from the New Testament. Again, we read from the book of Acts, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 51. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. You are doing just what your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who prophesied the coming of the righteous one. And now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You who received the law as transmitted by angels but did not keep it. When they heard these things, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed up into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they screamed at the top of their voices, covered their ears and rushed at him with one purpose in mind. They threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses laid their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. After he said this, He fell asleep. So far, our lesson. We join together to confess the Christian faith and will use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together to sing our next hymn, Peace to Soothe Our Bitter Woes. lesson for this Sunday is taken from John 14, the first 14 verses. Here Jesus speaks, do not let your heart be troubled. 
Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know where I am going, and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, you would also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Lord, said Philip, show us the Father, and that's enough for us. Have I been with you so long, Jesus answered, and you still do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I am telling you, I am not speaking on my own. But the Father who remains in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I tell you. The one who believes in me will do the works that I am doing. And he will do even greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we pray. Lord Jesus, we know that these are true words because they come from you and the Spirit who inspired them. We ask this day that through them you would encourage us, settle our hearts, and teach us our true purpose in this world. Amen. Our Lord Jesus tells us, do not be troubled. Don't be anxious or agitated. And our first response, my first response is that's easier said than done. We live in a broken world, don't we? The Apostle Paul had his troubles. We learn about those troubles from Scripture, don't we? In the book of Acts, we learn there that through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of God. So our road to heaven, not one that we deserve, but one that's been given freely and fully through faith in Jesus. That road is filled with potholes and bumps and detours. Some days it's slippery. Some days we say, Lord, what should I do? Where should I be going? The road is bumpy, isn't it? Trouble, anxiety, worry, those are heavy burdens. They heap up on our shoulders and in our hearts and in our minds, and often we try and convince ourselves that somehow, some way, someday, I'm 
going to succeed and work my way out of trouble. Jesus, our tender Lord and teacher and Savior, says to us, do not let your heart be troubled. That's his tender plea to his initial disciples, to us, to every child of God. Now, as he was saying this, he had also been talking about going away. He had been talking about, you can't come with me. He had been talking about denials coming from their lips, forsaking him. He's on his way to be arrested, isn't he? And ultimately crucified. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. The disciples were twisting and turning because they had heard their friend and teacher, their Lord, say, I'm going away. I'm not going to be with you much longer. And that caused them to be troubled. Jesus didn't want them to be troubled. He said to them, Believe in God. Believe in me. What an astonishing statement he makes there. And in our lesson, you heard Philip wanting to know the Father, to see the Father. And you also heard Jesus telling Philip, and you and me, if you know me, you know the Father. Jesus' mission was to come here and reveal the Father to us. Jesus is clearly saying, I am God. I'm equal to my Father in majesty and honor, in power and might. And here I am, the humbled God, anxious to serve you, anxious to suffer, to die, and to rise again, to pay for all sin, to pay for your sin and my sin. So Jesus invites us to believe, doesn't he? He gives us faith to believe. He wants us to lean on him, to trust in him, to not focus on trouble, but rather to focus on him who is the living one, he says, I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades. He's got all the power, doesn't he? He's conquered death and even hell itself. So he says, don't be troubled. He calls us to himself, doesn't he? He desires that we draw closer and closer to him. That we have this intimate faith-based relationship with him. And then he tells us two glorious truths. He says, don't be troubled because I've prepared a place for you. And he goes on to say, and I've prepared you for that place. So double preparation. There's a place for us and he prepares us for that place. 
He says, in my Father's house are many rooms or mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So here Jesus seeks to lift our eyes off of this troubled world. Whatever your troubles might be this day, whether it's in relationships, whether it's I don't have work, whether it's COVID, whether it's what's the fall going to look like, no matter what trouble might be burdening you today, Jesus seeks to lift our hearts and our eyes and our minds off of all this stuff in the world to the place that he has prepared for us. A mansion. No trouble there. No sorrow there. No worry there. No anxious hearts there. No burdens there. He wants to assure us that it's a big place. We don't have to concern ourselves. Lord, is there room for me? Will you be all sold out, so to speak, and I'm on the outside, not with you? That's so far from the truth, isn't it? Jesus says, my Father's house is glorious, lovely, mansion-like. And there's plenty of space there. Now, when we think of our future home, we might think of our own home here. We like our homes. We feel safe there, secure. We've had glorious memories there for the most part, heaven. Joyous camaraderie and family time. And Jesus wants us to think about the glorious home that our Father has prepared. Now when he thinks this way and speaks this way, we shouldn't Just think about him as a carpenter helping Joseph with nails in his hands or in his pocket. When we think about a prepared place, we should think about nails in his hands as he's pinned to the cross. When we think about him preparing a place for us, we shouldn't so much think about him skinning his hands as he's working with wood. But we should more think about precious blood flowing from the wood, from the cross itself, making payment for the sin of the world. You see, our room is prepared. It's done. We can't participate in its preparation. We're not asked to. We lack perfection. We're not worthy. Only one person could prepare our glorious home, and that's our Lord Jesus. Day by day, he obeyed. He bowed his head in death. He told them, I'm going away, and he meant his crucifixion immediately, didn't he? Soon, the next day, it was going to happen. And his resurrection which assures us 
that the work is complete, that the Father is satisfied, that His anger over against our sin has been set aside, and that there is remission of sins through faith in His name. The welcome mat of heaven is open, isn't it? It's right there. Our Lord Jesus prepared that place for us. He invites us to come. Believe in my Father. Believe in me. And then he says this also. He not only prepares that mansion for us, a place with many rooms. He also prepares us for that place. Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus again speaks such astonishing words here, doesn't he? He says, I am the way to the Father. I am the truth. I am the life. Now, if you want trouble, deny that. If you want trouble, then convince yourself that there's all kinds of ways to the Father. If you want trouble, then think that I'm a partner with Jesus in coming to the Father. If you want trouble, convince yourself there is no heaven. Convince yourself there is no hell. You know, no matter what the world and my ugly flesh might be trying to do every day, that is, cause me not to believe, cause me not to trust the promises. The world in my flesh can never bring peace to me. It can never lift the trouble off of my burdened conscience or heart or mind. What prepares me for the life to come is to claim Jesus as the way and the truth and the life. God, the Holy Spirit, calls us to faith in Jesus, to put our sins on him with sorry and sad hearts, to give him our sin. And he takes them. He's God, remember. He's our loving brother. And so all sin is taken up by Him. He's the forgiver of every sin. And as children of faith, we claim Him as the way to our Father, as the one who is the truth, as the one who is the life. God prepares us as he calls us to faith. He prepares us 
day by day, week by week, as we hear His voice in His Word. He prepares us through the glorious gift of baptism. Water and Word to make us His own, clothed in His righteousness. He prepares us with the heavenly feast, His body and blood, consecrated bread and wine to assure us that we belong to Him, that our sin is forgiven, and that we are on this heavenward journey to the place that has been prepared for us. He prepares us by even using difficult times in our lives, things we've never experienced. Through these, He's disciplining us, refining our faith, pruning off those things that don't bring Him glory, shaping us, molding us into the people that we ought to be. Jesus tells us not to be troubled. Boy, we struggle with that, don't we? His own disciples were struggling with that. He says, believe in God. You believe in my heavenly Father. Believe also in me. He's teaching us that he's God. One with his Father. That all power and honor and glory is his. That he alone is capable of offering the ransom price. He's capable. He's prepared the room. And he assures us that he sends his Spirit to teach us. Yes, Jesus. You are the way, and you are the truth, and you are the light. Day by day, he draws us to himself. Day by day, he desires that we lift our eyes and our troubled hearts and minds off of all of the broken things in this world. And focus on the fact that there's a place, an eternal room, reserved for us. And we live with nothing but confidence, knowing, Lord, you not only prepared that room, but you prepared me. And you're preparing me every day on my heavenward journey till I see you and the glorious band of saints. And in that place, no tears, no sorrow, no trouble. Lord, bring us to that place. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we join to pray. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant that we may be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Lord, also hear our petitions this day. As we live in a troubled world, we ask that you would bless all of those who are fighting against this invisible enemy that shows itself in people and also in bringing death. Bless the president and his team, bless doctors and nurses, scientists, all who are fighting against this disease. We know, Lord, that you have a plan and that you use hardship for the good of your church. And so continue to give us patience. Give us wisdom, and cause us day by day to be drawn closer and closer to you. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join to sing, Christ is our cornerstone. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. We pray. O Lord, we give you our heartfelt thanks that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, for the sake of Jesus our God and brother, to keep your word in pure hearts so that by that means we may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and death. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in again. Uh, we are hoping that the day of our assembling uh, is coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Also an announcement uh, on uh, the 19th of May, we will have a voters meeting again. We'll have that online um, and we'll notify you about that, how to get connected and so on, and uh, we will send you reminders. Uh, we need to have our uh, budget meeting to uh, adopt a budget, and also elect uh, our leaders, uh, board, and committee members. And so we'll send you that information uh, when the time uh, draws closer. But just to give you a heads up uh, about that upcoming meeting. We miss all of you. 
Uh, God bless your days. Thank you.